Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues and everyone. I thank the committee for giving me the opportunity to share with you this presentation about uh, the main topic, which I frequently present during my lectures. I would like to introduce myself. So, my name is Andre Pandolfi. I'm an ITI member and CDP member. I conduct training in perioimplantology in the course of dental hygiene and dentistry degree at the University of Rome La Sapienza as a teaching assistant. I have a private practice in Aprilia, mainly in perioimplantology and oral surgery, devoting myself in particular to guided implant surgery, minimal invasive procedure and mini micro micro um, implantology in order to reduce in order to reduce the invasiveness sorry I adjust my okay so um, on this topic I have been teaching and conducting educational activity focusing on video training in live uh, surgery in non dentistreaming.com this channel wants to give uh, to dentistry clinicians to the opportunity to share the online users and the clinicians' practices. I think the live surgery is the best way to share real experience without a hidden process uh, during the post-editing uh, video. So today it's very important to try to reduce the invasiveness uh, for your patient by choosing the better and appropriate treatment plan for the patient. This is possible by studying the clinical case careful with the diagnostics computer program. We quite often have bi biological complications in our clinical practices and we have to solve this kind of problem of, for our patient in a predictable way. I want to show you something about this, uh, this topic. So the question to which I would like to try to give a concrete answer about treatment of perimplantitis. Can the regenerative treatment can be stable over the long term? So we know that the probing of perimplant tissue in healthy condition is three or four millimeters. And if we have six millimeter of perimplant probing, we are already in stage of progressive loss of the pre-implant bone support. We know that the probing of pre-implant tissue in healthy condition is three or four millimeters. And in general, from the literature, we know that the prevalence of pre-implant in the patient treated with implant processes is about 20% or potentially 12% of the implant which we have used to rehabilitate our patient are affected by preimplantitis. However, there is very small correlation between preimplantitis and periodontally healthy patients and who have number of implants below four. In contrast, there is strong correlation between perimplantitis and periodontal compromised patients and patients with a number of implants equal or greater than four. The correlation becomes very strong of for periodontal compromised patients with a number of implants equal or greater than four and who have not been rehabilitated prosthetically by specialized prosthetic clinicians. There is so also a correlation with the, the type of implant system used. And in this study, Stroman TL implants have a lower correlation with the preimplantitis than other implants types, even in periodontal compromised patient who have been rehabilitated specialized prosthetic clinician. 
In conclusion, from this study, it's emerged that the role of the implant prosthesis, prosthesis in the prevention of biological complication has a real correlation. The factors which arise in preimplantitis are therefore periodontal condition of the patient, whatever they smoke, the number of implants per patient equal or greater than four, and whether the prosthetic rehabilitation has been performed by specialists. In Sweden, there is a subdivision of specialists and non specialists in implantology. It can be concluded that in this study that uh, if the processes on the implant are made up by the specialist in implantology, the result of biological complications are completely different from the processes performed by gen generalists. In addition, there are all important factors, the type, surface, and correct position of the implant. Use on original and on original implant processes components, as well as the use of biomaterial and implant processes certified and scientifically documented. Then the presence of appropriate supportive periodontal and per-implant treatment allow us to prevent the pre-implant complication in treatment patient. So, actual literature has the regenerative approach carried out, fillers and membranes are sorbable, and it has good pro therapeutic perspectives. The reference protocol for the diagnosis and treatment of preimplantitis assists published in 2000 by Lang. If we have a per-implant probe greater than or equal 6 mm and a bone loss of 2 mm on intraoral X-ray, the per-implant treatment allows se sequentially professional hygiene in order to lower the bacterial load at the same time performing an application of hydroxine peroxide, chlorexidine at 1%, and the local antibiotic application in gel. Then there will be GBR surgery, osteoplasty and or implantoplasty according to type of bone defect around the implant with the aim of eliminating the per-implant defect. Regarding types of defects around the implant, we can distinguish class 1 defects and class 2 defects and combinated defects. The class 1 defect is usually a vertical circumferential bone resorption around the implant with the typical bowl shape which is well visible in troll X-ray. Class 2 defect is a horizontal bone narrow absorption where there is more indication of osteoplastic, implantoplastic, and typical apical tissue repositioning. Often, in larger bone defect, we have a combination of both the typologies of defects. The GBR has a good predictability on the first class defect. But implantitis is related to periodontal history and predisposition of the patient and related to presence of bacterial plaque and the lack of adequate cleansing spaces to an uncontrolled cementation to the positioning of the prosthetic margin in depth to the apical prosthetic chipping or by overload on prosthetic compression. The overloading is an accelerating factor and if there is any inflammation it can cause a marked reduction in bone level around the implants and overloading significantly accentuates the bone loss. In my opinion, the overloading can also cause an additional factor, factor such as for example apical processing chipping or other processes mechanical complication such as the screw loosening which could aggravate the pre-implant information. In addition to these correlations, periodontal history and predisposition of patients pre-implantitis as a bacterial axiology. And 
I want to introduce you, Silvio, who in 2005 found his, himself in this clinical situation. Silvio had a regular supportive periodontal and pre-implant therapy for two years, which has which which was then interrupted for three years, unfortunately. The implant processes in 1.5 position at 80 millimeters of probing depth circumferentially. After, after the application of cyst protocol with hygiene procedure and local medication, the surgery was performed by raising a full thickness flap in order to expose the inflammatory granulus granulation tissue. The granulation tissue is re removed by using plastic corrects or better still, because uh, plastic is uh, so huge. And with metallic corrects moving the tip over the bone wall defect. After the cap shape resorption is drawn out, uh, we, we can start to use hydro hydroxyl peroxide, 10 volume. Alternate with saline solution and cloxidine at 1% gel. This surgical procedure has to allow us to fully observe the bone defect around the implant if there is a prosthetic complication, as in the, this case with apical chipping, which was corrected with a burst finishing stone and rubber. And now we have also titanium brush for implant surface. The use of titanium brush allows us to speed up the procedure whenever it's possible to use it. When it's possible, you can use the glacian powder in order to speed up the cleaning procedure. It's important to protect the soft tissue to avoid the tissue emphysema from the air pressure. Now the modern technology gives us the opportunity to use a towel with air pressure control and to handle with silicone tip with uh, which introduce the glycine powder in very specified and precise, precise way without uh, risk of tissue emphysema. After this procedure it's important to use the generous cleansing by using saline solution with the syringe or, or sonic device. When the cleaning of the implant surface has concluded you can start to use the heterologous substitute by, by material in order to fill the defects, both the vestibular and palatal sites, and cover the bone substitute with collagen membrane. The biomaterials chose depending by the defect and the time of biomaterial resorption, the, the, the time the time of biomaterial resorption, the type of defect is depending the, the choice of biomaterial. For this defect, the choice was for slow resorbable biomaterials. You can start to use a drologous substitute biomaterial in, or, in order to fill the defects, both vestibular and palatal sites, and cover the bone substitute with collagen membrane. Slow resorption collagen membrane. The suture procedure is applied in order to obtain the primary healing of the flap. The suggested suture to use is a 6-0 not absorbable monofilament as a IPTFI or blue propylene. Today, normally I prefer to use a blue, blue one because it's more likely to snap when you're under pressure, so preserving the soft tissue and avoiding too much tension on the flap. Also, I, it's more visible, especially when you have to remove after one week, for example. These are intral X-ray before and after three months of surgery. You can observe the complete filling of the defect and you notice the mesial molar peak has been preserved. You can see the baseline at and three months later on the X-ray and you can notice the peak level of the neighboring teeth of the implant. These procedures can preserve the peak of contiguous teeth so contiguous teeth 
so we can give the tissue maturation time so the 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 peak is the the gold standard for tissue generation so at first after surgery the infection and inflammatory process is involved solved and uh, a retraction of the tissue level happens because the swelling of the pre-implant mucosa reduced, the interproximal space are opened and the interproximal black hole operating. Look at the characterization of processes crown that give references to the recession of the soft tissue that has been there. This is what happened four years later. Silvio is a motivated patient with a high compliance level level and during his follow-ups the process is crowned completely crack unfortunately probably for internal crack and order hidden chipping of the crown he had a complete fracture of the ceramic crown i was forced to repeat the processes after four years from the perimplantitis surgery but looking at the times the tissue it seems to be the first surgery stage when the implant was positioned for the first time the tissue response was absolutely satisfactory then we continue to follow up over time and we can see what happens to the interproximal spaces the pseudopapilla having maintained the peak and continue of continuous teeth regain their space and this happened over time not due to the implant of per-implant tissue but due to periodontal care performed on the adjacent teeth this is what we radiographically and objectively see i can tell if there is performed bone around the implant or not what what we are interested is in uh, in is leaving it or to the soft tissue or coronal possible in order to maintain the level in the anatomy of the implant pre-implant mucosa as manageable as possible for hygiene maintenance for the patient this is our real aim and this is uh, the 10 years follow-up picture and now silvio has a 12 years follow-up i'd like to introduce to you marcello marcello objectively you can see much more swelling uh, respect of Silvio and you start to see to push especially if you press Y with a finger the patient received the non-surgical periodontal therapy in order to lower the plaque and bleeding index in the third session we have the perimplantitis Marcello had heavy heavy bleeding he missed his follow-up appointment and was not constant in SPPT supportive supportive periodontal per implant treatment and this is the radiographic image that I found at at baseline even though the defect was deep enough we were close to the maxillary sinus we had a certainly certain perimplantitis disease as huge perimplantitis um, defect. You see that there are the peaks of neighboring teeth that give references for our surgery approach. Radiograph radiographically, the condition can be handled in the implant is uh, perfectly positioned at the center of the crest. This is a uh, fundamental. If there is a well-made processes, we can go ahead according to plan, treating the site as if it were a real tooth according to the periodontal approach. He had 10 millimeters probing depth. This is a um, 15 millimeters probing with heavy bleeding. I performed the full thickness flap in order to expose the granulation tissue which was removed 
with plastic or metal correct cor metal correct is better in this photo we cannot tell if uh, he had necrotized the bone particles on the surface implant or something else but it's important to remove it we can help with the use of abrasive powder but only with the, the aim of speeding up the implant surface cleaning process as you can see the surface remained quite stretched but at the time I didn't have the teflon tip but now normally I use them after deep cleaning I started to use the biomaterial filler with slow resorption with a collagen membrane on the top in order to obtain the protection of the heterologous bone according to GBR procedure and then the suture was positioned after deep cleaning I start to use the biomaterial filler with the slow resorption with collagen membrane and on the top in order to obtain the two protection now I prefer use to slow resorption membrane the procedure is according to the GBR procedure and the, then the, so, the suture are, were, was positioned when we applied this suture, the suture on the delicate tissue in that inflammatory condition you can see many nodes which was due to my inexperience at the time I applied what I had learned about the periodontal approach giving a good tension on the flap managing the tension of the flap with this delicate tissue because of edema and bleeding is very difficult for this, for this reason is fundamental to prepare the patient and the perimplantitis site with non-surgical approach before the surgical approach of perimplantitis this is how I now do it with the help of the specialized hygienist the x-ray baseline showed the defect before and the x-ray done three months later you can see a sufficient bone filling of the defect sorry filling because it's uh, now it's not bone yet the photo shows the healing condition of the tissue after six months and this is what happened to the tissue after one year paying attention to preserve the peak crest on the membrane tick this is the what happened over time the filling has good outcome in the x-ray image and the soft tissue matures over time here at two years here three years five years at eight years the soft tissue is good consistent and turgid the outcome is perfect radiographically and objectively with the healthy condition probing at 11 years follow-up and Marcello also has had a follow-up to 13 years I have told you about this individual monodentulous case but as we know the problem is mainly of the partial dentals patient who are even more at risk of preimplantitis with the bacterial plaque accusation we know that the biological complication as preimplantitis is due to gas response over the bacterial load and often partially edentulous patients are more exposed to higher plaque index the relationship between preimplantitis is higher for patients with more than or equal to four per implants 
and uncontrolled periodontal disease. And I would like to present the history of a patient with a big defect under the soft tissue. This is one of the cases I treated in 2005. Watch it. The granulation tissue is extensive and after the debridement, you can see the perimplant defect. So for the dimension of the defect, you can just count the threads of implant. The thread of distance is uh, 1.2 millimeters and the bone defect is almost 10 millimeters deep by counting the implant threads. Following the same guided procedure, I have treated the old pre-implantitis case with the same operating procedure. After the debridement and cleaning the implant surface, as described previously, the procedure goes ahead with the use of hydrolysis biomaterials filler. I had never treated the pre-implantitis defect of any patient with autologous bone because treating the patient is those years was really difficult. The patients were extremely difficult to handle and they were angry because they had a pro problem with their implant prosthetic rehabilitation and with any symptoms. They often had a big infection in their mouth. The preimplantitis is often a subtle disease. In this year, in those years, they were often told they would have no more problem with the implant prosthetic rehabilitation. So, can you imagine the reaction when told about the preimplantitis surgery with the eventual autologous bone harvest taken from somewhere else, of perhaps from the mandible ramus or the other mouth donor site? So, I have only ever used autologous bone filler with the resorbable membrane. This is what happens after two years. The difficulty of maintenance is always there because there is a bridge which makes it, which make it uh, difficult to keep clean, but the outcome of filling the issue is uh, satisfying. And after two years, I had the opportunity to reopen because the patient had a problem on the distal wisdom tooth. And this is what I saw after two years of reopening. I took a sample of bone in this area where I had but put biomaterials in order to check how this biomaterial had been replaced. I cannot tell if there was the rust integration because it was not a block section. However, the probe here did not enter. There was a unprobing depth. No probing depth. There was a new bone level and there was close contact between the bone and implant surface. The scientific literature about rose integration to, to which we can refer is uh, the ALAG study in, of 2008 where the result demonstrates that rogue surface, surface which were plaque contaminated and cleaned by different methods can rose integrate. In these photos, we can see that after two years from perimplantitis regenerative treatment, the bone defect around the implant are regenerated and it can be possible to notice the intimate bone implant contact without probing depth around the implant and without intermediate soft tissue around the implant surface. I want to present this recent study by Fletcher where the author demonstrated that on a human after treatment of preimplantitis it can be possible to have rose integration. The protocol applied on one implant of five implants included into Toronto Bridge Rehabilitation was plastic red uh, for the debridement, saline solution per, per, for for one minute, oxygen peroxide for one minute, calcium peroxide plus deprotonized the bone bovine mineral, 
and porcine membrane. After the healing period, the, treat, the treated implant was explanted and the histologic result demonstrated that the rust integration defined as histologic evidence of new direct bone to implant contact on previously contaminated implant surface is possible in the human. After my clinical experiences between 2005 2007, I now have other confirmation that the ROS integration is possible, but I want to underline that from 2001, when I started to treat perimplantitis, the goal of treatment of perimplantitis defect is, not to is, is to fill the defect in order to preserve the residual implant ROS integration, because we know that even two millimeters can keep the implant on site. After the healing period, the treated implant was sorry. The SPT program is crucial in order to intercept as soon as possible the preimplantitis, and, and central is the rule of hygienist. However, the goal of treatment of preimplantitis was to restore the healing of, of preimplant tissue in order to keep the tissue stable and stop infection around the implant. This was made it possible and the outcome was maintained in the long term. For these reasons, the key factors for a good outcome are as follows and for the treatment, the rule of implant positioning is fundamental. Today, I can study much better with planning software with the aim of generating a guided template in place of traditional template. The planning can be done, therefore, reducing invasive surgery with a reduced flap design, choosing the exact and precise drill angle insertion and implant axis. We use the depth and diameter stop drills. Summarizing, we can decide type of implant and abutment, the ideal position of the implant prosthesis processes with knowledge of choosing the appropriate treatment for the patient, keeping in mind the future possible complication that might occur. The guided software improves our performance in terms of planning and give it, gives more opportunity in, or, in challenging situation, for example, and more power to handle the problem if there is any complication in the future. I would like to introduce the patient, Fifiero. Patient interview about uh, impression of uh, Fiero on the feeling about the modern approach to computer guided planning since he had received non computer guided surgery in the past. Volevo sapere da te un'impressione su quali sono, dal tuo punto di vista, i vantaggi che hai visto in questa nuova metodica che abbiamo introdotto da ormai un po' di tempo a questa parte. I vantaggi nella tempistica sono evidenti. Diciamo che qui andrebbe spiegato più dal professionista che da chi lo riceve. Per cui, eh... Cioè, nel senso, hai visto diciamo, dei vantaggi nella gestione delle sedute, cioè sono state più rapide, hai avuto queste più rapide, più rapide e, e minori. E minori. In ultima analisi, eh, questa è una mia impressione, in futuro eh, la manutenzione o il mantenimento dell'impianto ci darà sicuramente meno noie, eh, per cui tempi ottimizzati. Perché pensi che ci possa essere meno problemi futuri? Perché hai questa sensazione? Perché, Perché ehm, mettere un impianto di due elementi, metterli in un modo univoco, è chiaro che eh, aumenta la precisione e aumenta eh, il, la saldatura, come, come si può dire, del, del, del sistema. Del sistema. Ah, questa, eh. cioè, questa per esempio è una cosa che è un'impressione, un però impressione. di sicuro sul fatto che siamo più eh, precisi, meticolosi e precisi è sicuramente quello sì. Questo non è detto che si traduca poi in non avere problemi futuri, sì, 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 sì. però sì, sicuramente è una sensazione comunque. Sensazione, intanto sì. intanto sì. mi fa piacere che tu me la dica, insomma, sì, perché sì, 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 raccogliere sì. questo tipo di informazione è sì. sempre importante. Vedendo gli impianti sul computer ha aumentato il nostro dialogo. A livello psicologico mi sento sereno.
Clearly, interception of pre implant, uh, uh, pre implant problem, pre implantitis uh, disease is crucial to the resolution, and the role of hygienists is uh, central. And for this reason, I would like to suggest to include them in our training activities. It's very difficult uh, to have an adequate th therapy without uh, an adequate prevention. We can not do it alone, and in fact, I would never have intercepted Giulietta per implant disease. I had in this case the chance to minimize the surgery by running a small flat patches to highlight the per implant defect present. I did the incision of papilla and pseudopapilla, first mesial and then distal to the implant. We can cut with the, the same blade. We can go deep inside per implant defect in order to separate the, the granulation tissue from the bone and from the implant. Granulation tissue is few and ad the ad addition is uh, so high on bone wall. The flap is extended enough to see the pre-implant defect. And for a small defect like in this case, it's not necessary to lift the palatal flap. And if the process is closed well on the implant, it's not necessary to remove it. But radiographically, there was no closing gap. But uh, when I observed directly, there, there was a gap. The gap was present. And at this point, the crown has been removed. And I, I can access well around the defect. But if the crown closed correctly on the implant shoulder, there is no indication of removing prosthesis. The palatal flap is not elevated and if not necessary, if not necessary. After pre-implant defect granulation, the bacterial load reduction of pre-implant surface was obtained by the mechanical action of the ultrasonic piezo surgery, piezosonic and piece with plastic tip eventually alternate with abrasive powder and chemical action of hydroxyl peroxide, saline solution, chlorhexidine, and the use of socket, socket goats. Afterwards, the defect um, is filled with the bowing derivative xenograph and covered with membrane gel. Then the suture were positioned. After one year, the stability of the tissue is good and the maintenance is perfect at five years follow-up. Meanwhile, the patient loses the second premolar for root fracture, which has been replaced by a ceramic implant monotype and immediate non-functional loading was performed. The perimplantitis can be successfully treated predictably if early intercept and apply non-surgical approach first the regenerative surgical treatment. I want to introduce Antonella. Antonella. Um, in order to show a case with a stage timing as simplifying the treatment of preimplantitis. Antonella presents a preimplant defect to 2.6 position. And as you can see from the radiograph, before the treatment of preimplantitis, so we have to remove the metal ceramic crown. The crown is prepared and unscrewed. This is a radiographic uh, image of the defect. And after the anesthesia, local anesthesia, we performed the solving uh, the third forcation of the the teeth the tooth
with the piezo surgery tool OT12 was used in order to do a thin root first of application of surgery was performed the cleaning of the, the implant with the plastic tip and with the piezo surgery tool or T12 was used in order to, to do a thin cut on the root and with Teflon tip was dislocated for, from the alveolar socket this is the residual root this is the residual root so after the net cutting, the root planning has been performed with the um, special piezo tool with the thin granulometry, 30 micron, named OP5. And with the osteoplastic tool, OT4, the alveolar socket has been washed and socket preservation was performed with the etherogalous bone substitute in order to avoid the soft tissue collapse into the root defect. The aim of this surgical procedure is to keep the volume of the tissue and to find out the second surgical step in the more favorable situation possible after three months. Using value-based plus composite screw retaining the prosthesis was prepared for the implant in order to distribute the proper load by avoiding overloading to the 2.7. The elimination of uh, the measle root, the interprocessional passage between 2.6 and 2.7 has, be, has become large, allowing a good passage of hygienic tools like interdental brush. At the moment, 2.7 that was maintained and mobility second degree has become one degree after two months. This is the outcome after three months and the patient is ready to receive the regenerative treatment of the perimplant defect. Antonella um, accepted to share her surgery in live streaming. Dentist streaming is the new innovative platform where the presenter can share the dentistry treatment in live with the users. The users on dentist streaming can interact by chat directly with the presenter who can answer the question during the live event. The real protagonist of this innovative method is uh, the patient uh, who, ca who can share with the presenter and the users is in the real experience. Anyone who wants to present as a presenter and share his own surgery can use the reality dentistry channel and I did involve it I did involve Antonella who participated in uh, in the live session with another online user half an hour before the live connection within the surgical room was shown a video of Antonella and non-surgical approach is uh, was performed and this is a video who presented before the live surgery The tissue presents less edema and the hygienist can treat with a full mouth disinfection approach the patient. In particular, it can treat the assistant with mini invasive tips simply to eliminate the amount of plaque in order to reduce the bacteria load before the perimplantitis surgery. Perimplantitis surgery is planned seven days before that, uh, this uh, stage. This, se this session was regular part of regular SPT program, which Antonella started to follow regularly. Regularly, we can use glycine low abrasive powder by adjusting the jet and are very very carefully, and a special tip in plastic in order to to move to move to remove the the plaque over the implant.
when we use uh, um, the glycine low abrasive powder uh, the power is it's uh, have to adjust very carefully in order to avoid the pressure the operator uh, should I always use a magnify glasses 2.5 times to check the correct application of the device without stressing the soft tissue. The magnify is very important. You can use thin tips for the continuous elements and then the sil silicone tips, which gently inserted inside the mucosal sulcus, sulcus the air power handle gently. The aim of this session is to reduce the bacterial load before the pre-implantary surgery. This is the same procedure applying to the treatment of uh, mucositis. So the patient is called again 24 hours before the surgery session to apply with our traumatic tip needle, hydrogen peroxide, 10 12 volume, corexidin gel 1%, antibiotic gel mixed with the metronidazole 30%, minocycline 1%, and chlorexidin gel. This mix is pre prepared by uh, um, chemists. This defect is uh, the same protocol that we use for the treatment of mucositis and will present a study with my research team at Aero 9 in 2008, 18 in Amsterdam on June. Uh, as you see the step and the tail because uh, we need to uh, have good preparation of soft tissue before the surgical treatment of preimplantitis as we usually do in treating periodontal defect with the regenerative uh, pro procedure. This is the day of live surgery uh, on dentistimi.com performed on 7 October 2017. It's possible to watch the full video on demand, fully video. Plastical anesthesia was always performed during the surgery away from the area of the defect in order to avoid the stress of the soft tissue. As you see, this tissue were very resistant and very compact after preparation stage. The preparation stage from 2001-2005 were less carefully, and for this reason you had seen the soft tissue with the great edemon and bleeding in the previous cases show, shown. The preparation stage allows us to prepare the soft tissue and surgery we can perform the incision with good control or using microblade like can you watch in this case the incision is as invasive as possible and the flap design is uh, executed to expose only the, the defect the incision was made up to intercept the bone crest peak in order to isolate the granulation tissue to remove it The flap is raised to full thickness and if the tissue addition can be in size with the blade number 15, see? The relief cut is only performed to properly display the defect if necessary. The full thickness flap was raised for about 2 mm to keep the periostal tool. Glycine, so first uh, the tool, plastic tool was used.
And glycine powder is always used with the silicon tip to handle the deeper parts of the pre-implant surface. The use of this tool is easy and fast because uh, we have already done the staging procedure before during non-surgical treatment. If you notice that the palatal flap was not lifted by trying, by trying to get to palatal surface, surface on the implant with the instrument, the correct and the silicone tip have the design to reach the parallel side of the implant. The screw crown has not been removed because the closure of value-based screw retaining abutment uh, is perfect at the implant shoulder and the crown gives st stable references during surgery, especially during the flap design. So we can treat the defect as a periodontal defect around the two tooth as well. Even the palatal flap is not lifted, and this is, will provide greater stability of the wound after the suture. Besides the use of piezoelectric tips, we can also use the other devices. But you can notice that the, the, the tips, it's very difficult to introduce the tip because the, the flap is, uh, the, the palatal flap is very stable. correct we can finishing the the granulation tissue the brimant and we can also use a titanium brush such as the brush where the implant surface is accessible The alternate use of mechanical tools such as piezoelectric tips, abrasive powders and titanium brush have the purpose to speed up the implant surface cleaning procedure. It's preferably it's, uh, possible to use metal corrects uh, within respect to plastic ones for the greater cutting capacity using the cutting edge to the bone wall. The granulation tissue is always attached to the residual bone wall and the defect and not on the implant surface. We can continue with the with the low abrasive powder and then we can positioning the gel for extend one percent. During the waiting time, minimum two minutes for topical application of uh, um, chlorhexid in gel, we performed the collagen membrane cut shaped according to the pre-implant defect in order to protect the heterologous bone filler. We prepare collagen fib fib fibrin in order to keep the biomaterial inside the defect. The collagen sponge is used to prevent the material lack from the defect. Finally, the pericardium collagen membrane has been placed on the, on the fill previously performed.
we can fill the defect. After filling, we can adapt to the biomaterial without pressure. Finally, the collagen sponge is used to prevent the material lack from the defect and the portion pericardium collagen membrane has been placed on the fill. This kind of membrane it has, has lower absorption times and the membrane when we're in contact with the blood becomes elastic and easier to handle then the membrane is inserted and lack locked under the pseudopapilla and under the vestibular periosteum, which are stable and ready to receive the suture. The vestibular flap performed was small and stable and so it were not necessary to use the nails to stabilize the membrane. The suture has been made with polypropylene blue monofilament the suture wire is very safe because if you pull it too, too much, the wire breaks. In my opinion, the, def the delicacy of this suture does not allow to apply a too strong tension to the flap that should be sutured without tension. Finally, the amelogen protein allows us to speed up healing. Basically, for this kind of surgery, I introduce Emdogain because it allows to arise to speed up when the wound closure. Normally for this surgery it, it takes four weeks to reach an acceptable, an acceptable healing of the flap. With Indogain you can get a healing faster and reach it two weeks before. This photo, after that uh, you, are, you, you can apply vestibular and in the parallel side. This photo shows four days after and one month healing without with intral X-ray, which uh, show only the feeling of the defect. But the outcome is good and very predictable. Well, this is at uh, time zero. Here we are at week to remove stitches and one month of healing and this is what Antonella story case is. I want to present the I presented the preliminary result of this retrospective study at ITI World Symposium held in Basel in May. 39 patients and 66 implants with the periplantitis were treated with a regenerative approach following a CIS protocol, including criteria where PPD major or equal 6 millimeters, bone loss major 2 millimeter, class 1 defect, vertical bone loss cap shape resorption is included, and suppuration and bleeding on probing. After pre-implant defect accumulation, the bacterial load reduction on implant surface was obtained by the mechanical action of the ultrasonic tip, eventually alternate with abrasive powder and by the chemical action of hydroxine perogen, per, hydrogen peroxide, 10, 12 volume. Solo, saline solution and chlorhexidine gel, 0.51%, with the use of soaked gauze. Afterward, the defects were filled with bovine, David xenograft, and covered with a collagen membrane. 34 patients and 57 implants completed the follow-up at 10 years. 14.7% of patients had a perimplantitis recidivism, or in other words, 
57 of the treated implant, only 9 had recurrence, 11.1%. These results show how implants with perimplantitis, once treated, have the similar survival and success rate to the beginning of the implant prosthetic re rehabilitation. So, the regenerative treatment of preimplantitis has good prosthetic, a good therapeutic prospect with a long term period of maintenance. Individual program of supportive periodontal and preimplant treatment is crucial for health maintenance of preimplant tissues over the long term. Rest integration can be achieved by use of biomaterial fillers and resorbable membranes. The reducing of bacterial load on the pre-implant surface can be obtained by the mechanical action of ultrasonic tips eventually alternate with abrasive powders, the chemical action of hydro hydrogen peroxide 10-12 volume, sodium chloride saline solution, chlorexidine gel 0.51% and gauss socketing chlorexidine. It's well docu documented in literature that patients treated with stromantial implant prosthesis have less biological complication, and this can be successfully treated with, with good outcome and maintenance in the long period. So we can meet on. I want to thank Boris for this webinar and dentistry to give me the possibility to share the real experience in live with my patient. Uh, and uh, I would like to invite anyone who wants to share their clinical experiences live using this innovative communication method with the patient and direct protagonist. And this is the annual dentistry program and next live surgery event will be on to December, 2nd of December on guided periimplantology. And uh, finally, I want to thank you for your kind attention and I hope to, to have give you a real answer to the regenerative option for the treatment of periimplantitis. In particular, in particular, I would like to emphasize that the importance of SPT program and the early interception of periimplant disease because it allows as to reduce the invasiveness of the surgery with the very predictable outcome for total benefit for the patients. Thank you very much. And so I read my... So how do you explain uh, your opinion uh, that inflammation can contribute to skin? No, so in my opinion, is the inflammation of uh, the peri-implant Niels sin. But hi. So, um, the inflammation, the, the screw loosening can contribute to, to inflammation because uh, um, the movement, or, for example, can, uh, can make the, the tissue not very stable and uh, can, can start the inflammation. That's, uh, and if the inflammation, uh, inflammation uh, can improve and so go on in a preimplantitis defect is uh, it's a reversible uh, preimplant di disease and so the processes um, have to close well on the implant shoulder and the system have to stable in order to avoid the inflammation or to grow up the the preimplantitis uh, disease so should no, um, so should we plasty to treat also if we're attempting regeneration? So very interesting questions. Uh, so the implantoplastic um, is a method to use when you you don't have uh, you have the the implant outside bone crest. If you if the implant inside of the bone crest vestibule and you have vestibular, palatal, and mesial and distal wall. You, you, you can avoid uh, plastic uh, of the implant, implantoplastic implant, Implast sorry, implantoplastic procedure. 
No, uh, sorry, David. Um, so this, when when you performed the um, the flap on the small defects, uh, it, it's um, it's very simple to to go um, in the parallel side without elevate the flap. So if you have any huge if you have a huge um, problem on per implant, um, probably you have to elevate the flap. When you have a, a small problem, a small defect, it's not necessary because the flap, uh, the vestibular flap, uh, you, 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 you have to see everything around the implant and you can use uh, the, the tip and, for example, silicon flexible tip in order to um, to make um, uh, this to make a cleaning of the the implant surface. So uh, revaluation, the, David. So uh, the the Eric's evaluation uh, is um, uh, it's performed uh, um, three months after surgery. Uh, six months and twelve months. Normally, we don't perform uh, nine months uh, check because uh, when you you have six months of follow-ups, normally you have uh, solved the problem and you can avoid you have you have avoid the uh, the X-ray control. Now, I have I have only. Um, in my experience, uh, David, did, so ask me uh, DFDBA versus uh, Xenograft. I have only experience on Xenograft biomaterial, and so in my experience, uh, I use only Xenograft biomaterial. I haven't experience for DFDBA. And I want to thanks again uh, the bodies. Bodies and the webinar support in order to have permit me to permit to permit uh, this event and.